Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to the disaster. <laughs> hey, check this out. I know you guys have all been curious. Uh, myself was also curious on whether or not uh, this case could be saved, this um, front of the transmission. And uh, you will not believe this, but Lindsay Machine actually repaired that big hole in the case. Can you believe that? Um, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but I mean, it looks factory, better than factory. It's actually thicker than factory. And um, look at inside of here. He's actually got, let me see if I can tip it up so you can see. You can see the bevels that he machined to be just like the original. There's a bearing race here on the outside, and then there's a pocket sort of inside there you can kind of see the pocket and then there's a groove let's see uh, it's kind of groove in the bottom right uh, you can see in the groove of the bottom of the bearing race where oil if it gets through can kind of filter back down into the transmission uh, gosh you guys uh, absolutely beautiful the work he did um, I asked him how he did it he took a flat piece of aluminum, square, cut it out, drilled a hole in the middle, bolted it to a, to a kind of a stud sort of thing, mounted it in his lathe, lathed it round, cut it round, machined all of this stuff into it to match the original, and then took that centerpiece out, welded it to the case, filled in the hole and then remilled all this off. I mean, gosh dang, I mean, can you believe that? And then he remilled the inside of here where the hole was. So anyway, uh, long story made short, case is saved. Therefore, we're going to keep the original case. Now the other half is over there. I'm gonna clean it out and um, get it ready for something really cool I'm gonna show you here, so hang tight. Okay guys, uh, <laughs> now for the cool part. Um, I actually uh, learned this um, by doing a ton of reading and I stumbled upon this uh, thread. I don't even know who it was that did it for the first time, but this is the original gear set that came out of the transmission. A reminder, this is the input shaft, intermediate shaft with the trashed bearing and then the output shaft. Now, as you recall, this driven gear, this is the drive gear from the input shaft, runs this driven gear which is pressed onto this intermediate shaft and that's chipped. So that was something that we were going to have to deal with. And then uh, all the other gears are actually okay. But here's the cool part. So the case is repaired, so I didn't buy a new trans or a used transmission off of eBay. Instead, while I was waiting to make a decision, I stumbled upon this thing where guys had done this modification to the GS Adventure transmission. So I'm going to do my best to explain this, but the uh, R1150GS motorcycle came in two different styles. It came in the Adventure form, which had a little bit bigger suspension. Um, it had a bigger fuel tank and it had slightly different gearing or you could get a transmission that was known as the enduro transmission that had different gearing in it and uh, so the gearing on a regular adventure enduro transmission which was the one that was sought after has a lower first gear so this is actually this you can't really see this diagram over here too well but this last gear right here is gear number one. This is first gear, this is fifth gear, this is third gear, this is fourth gear, this is sixth gear, and this one out here is second gear. And so this shaft, this intermediate shaft, came in two different styles. It came with the first gear that was a lower gear ratio for the adventure transmission or the enduro transmission and the gear ratio on that first gear was um, 
2.375, okay? That was the gear ratio, 2.375. And on the R1150 GS with the standard transmission or the RS, which was more of the street bike, had basically the same transmission. The only difference is it had a higher first gear ratio, so instead of being 2.375, it was actually 2.045, so it didn't go down as low because they're not off-road riding. The other interesting thing is this sixth gear right here. No, let's see. Let me think about this. No. One, five, three, four, six. Yeah, this sixth gear on the Adventure or Enduro transmission uh, was a little bit lower gear ratio than the RS or the standard GS transmission. Sorry to confuse here. It was 0 .800 was the ratio. So it was an overdrive. Instead of one to one, it was 0.8. So it's a little, it's a bit of an overdrive. However, on the standard GS or the RS transmission, as I understand it, I could be wrong on this, but the sixth gear actually came with an even better overdrive at 0.697. So, what I decided to do was look for an intermediate gear, sh uh, intermediate gear cluster and shaft as well as an output gear cluster and shaft from an R1150 RS because it has the higher sixth gear. It has a higher overdrive. And I found this article where uh, some BMW enthusiasts learned that you can press off this driven gear. It takes 15 tons of force. I have a 20, 20 ton press but you can actually take the bearings off, and take the, uh, press this gear off, press this gear off after heating it up, which gives you access to these other gears, and you can keep the Adventure or Enduro transmission shaft, which has the lower first gear, so that gives me the low gearing for off-road, and you can reassemble it and use the sixth gear off of the R1150 RS giving you the higher overdrive of 0.697 instead of 0.8. And at the same time, I can actually press this gear on, which replaces this chipped one, and this gear on, which replaces this one. These gears are all in fantastic shape on this one. I'll probably use most of them. And that will allow me, uh, this cost $100 by the way. It cost me $100 to repair the case. So that's $200 instead of the $330 input shaft that you guys saw in the last video. So I take that back. I actually keep my low gear, my low first gear. I have a better or higher overdrive gear. I have a repaired case and the whole thing costs me $100 less or $130 less than what I was expecting. So tell me that's not sweet, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that extra $100 to buy a few other clutch components that I don't technically need to replace, but it's gonna be nice to replace while I'm in there. So I know that was super confusing, but essentially the bottom line is, case is repaired. I found a good intermediate shaft and a good output shaft that I can take the gears off that I need to replace these chip ones also end up with a higher overdrive and still keep my low first gear on the adventure transmission and this will be kind of a hybrid uh, transmission by the way the second third fourth and fifth gears are the same with both transmissions so neither of them change so what i'm going to do is look the gears over very carefully and because they were meshed together i'm going to if i decide to use gears off of this one i'll keep the gears over here since they mesh um, and I'll just look and see which one looks the best and use, you know, use the best. But I'll replace the bearings. I've got a lot of work to do. I've got to measure all these. There's shimming that's required to make sure they're exact. And I, uh, I this is my first time doing it. I'm probably not going to record it. I'm going to figure it out as I go. 
and I'll keep you posted. So that's the great news. Uh, you can always turn uh, lemons into lemonade, as they say, and so that's what we're going to do with this transmission is we're going to make it a better overdrive for fuel economy and long-range touring um, and bring the RPMs down a little bit in that sixth gear and still keep our good low first gear that's the draw for having the adventure transmission or the enduro transmission and uh, get the other parts that we need to replace to make it make it right and uh, we'll go from there so I'm gonna take the next several hours and starting to work on this uh, oh there's one other thing well yeah I'll talk about it right now here's another really interesting weird thing I learned this is the replacement bearing made in Poland uh, for this transmission. Notice how it's sealed. So there's a seal there and a seal there. The, I thought this was odd. Why would you use a sealed bearing in a transmission that's got tranny fluid, tranny oil circulating through? Tranny oil can't get in and out of this bearing and keep it flushed and keep it clean. I don't know if they did it because they worried that someone would run low on oil and they didn't want the bearings to seize up on them or what but it seems a little weird a little BMW weirdness if anybody out there knows why that was done over a standard roller bearing that was open without being sealed that the oil could um, flush in and out because it's got drains for them in there so I almost bought those kind of bearings but I thought well because I don't know what I'm doing I better stick with the genuine BMW stuff but thought that was super interesting. Anyway, a little tidbit for you. Uh, we'll keep you informed on how it goes, but uh, right now I'm actually pretty jazzed. I'm pretty psyched. I think we're gonna end up with something even more cool than what we had planned. So anyway, peace out everybody.